one of the reasons why we care about occupational exposure, number one, is to make sure that our staff are safe and protected when they care for patients, when they interact with their coworkers. When a healthcare worker is exposed, we now need to consider that they might have acquired infection to COVID-19. In those situations, we're required to quarantine those healthcare workers in accordance with uh, CMOH orders or Chief Medical Officer of Health orders. Uh, and this is to ensure that someone who might be incubating uh, the virus and might potentially become infected is not at work and potentially being a risk to their coworkers and their patients. So it's very important that when workplace health and safety learns of a potential exposure, that we assess to see if someone has been truly exposed and potentially uh, has acquired uh, infection with the virus that causes COVID-19. There are many factors that we workplace health and safety considers when considering if someone has been exposed. Firstly, we look at the, the nature of the interaction between, let's say, a patient who might have been a COVID-19 case or a coworker who might have been a COVID-19 case. Uh, for example, was someone uh, at the bedside uh, during an aerosol generating medical procedure? Uh, was someone talking to a patient and that patient coughed in their face, for example? Uh, these sorts of things. What was the nature of the interaction? Then we look at things like um, duration and uh, proximity. So uh, was the person uh, very close uh, to the, the COVID-19 case? Uh, and, for so, and if so, for how long? Was this just a, you know, a brief exposure of a few seconds passing someone in the hallway, for example, which likely would not be considered an exposure? Or, you were, or were you very close to the patient bedside, for example, for maybe 30 minutes? Or were you in a break room where maybe there wasn't physical distancing, people had their masks off because they were sharing a meal? Uh, for an extended period of time. So these sorts of interactions we, we think about. And beyond those interactions, we also look at what, uh, the, how, what someone's practices are with respect to hand hygiene and the proper doffing of personal protective equipment. For example, while you're wearing personal protective equipment, you're, ex you're protected while you're interacting with a case of COVID-19, be it a patient or a coworker. But if, let's say your, your doffing technique is not very good, uh, maybe you, you remove your mask and don't perform hand hygiene and then go on to touch your face, touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth, that sort of thing. So you might have been protected while you care for the patient, but in the process of doffing your PPE, you might have actually you know, exposed yourself from touching the contaminated PPE. So these are things that workplace health and safety considers when assessing exposure. But to keep things simple, um, we know that our current IPC recommendations for a known or suspected case of COVID-19 is contact and drop of precautions. This means a mask, eye protection, gown, and gloves. If an aerosol generating medical procedure is going to be performed, then the mask is replaced by an N95 respirator. And that's the, the main uh, PPC, PPE approach that we use for COVID-19. Now, with respect to protecting our staff, the key components of that is to ensure that we're protecting our mucous membranes. So the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So eye protection and a mask are key. And that's why we've gone to a continuous masking approach, as well as recently now continuous use of eye protection, again, to protect those mucous membranes. Even when there are times when we might have a patient who we don't realize might be infected with COVID-19 at the time that we're interacting with them. So again, with respect to protecting a healthcare worker uh, when working with a case of COVID-19, eye protection and mask are what are key to protecting your mucous membranes, your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. In situations where workplace health and safety is assessing an exposure, where you've had close contact with, let's say, uh, an infected uh, coworker or an infected patient, so long as that eye protection and mask were in place, you'd be considered protected and not exposed and not be required to be uh, off on quarantine. Now, if a patient is asymptomatic or a coworker is asymptomatic and they're actually COVID-19 positive, uh, all that is required is the use of continuous masking. So let's say you're in a break room with a staff member who's infected and maybe they go on to develop symptoms the next day. So long as you were wearing a mask, uh, then you would be considered protected and not exposed. In the case of an aerosol generating medical procedure, again, the, the key piece of protection is in 95 respirator. So long as you're wearing an N95 and eye protection when an AGMP is performed, you'd be considered protected and not exposed. And in situations where a patient is asymptomatic and maybe we only learn about their COVID-19 infection the next day, so long as you're wearing a procedure mask and eye protection, uh, in most cases, the healthcare worker will be considered protected. But again, once we know that they're a case, uh, it's expected and the best practice is to wear an N95 respirator when an AGMP is being performed. And that, in a nutshell, is how workplace health and safety assesses exposures. Thank you.
Together, we do amazing things every day.